So this next one, it's a bit of a long one, then well, I'll probably come up here. What? <laughs> and this one is called Sense Soul Song. Um, I wrote this one a while back when I was having some trouble with a friend, and so it comes from a bit of a place of hurt. But the poem that came out was really, for me, one of my best, and one of the hardest to write, though. Hard and easy in the sense that it came out, but it came out big. So this poem is called Stenoscope Song, and I hope you all enjoy it. You told me that when you saw her, your heart skipped a beat. So I attached a stopwatch to my rib cage to see if my heart would ever skip a beat too. Covered my chest in scrap metal when you told me you were falling for her. Entangled my blood vessels with barbed wire and electric fence to stop hemorrhages from overturning my flimsy defenses. Plugged my windpipe with gauze and electrical tape. Dyed my blood clear to make the veins transparent. Leech the arteries white. Never mind the darker hued tears that make it past the surgeon's knife. You told me you were in love. And I never believed. Bomb shelter my eyes, stop the fall from fallout, surgical masks for Beijing level smog. Haven't you heard the story of a teenager who replaces eyelids with tattoos and a black hole singularity right beside his breastbone tied invisible rope around his collar like it was puppetry wire, so his lips shut and I hear he went to sleep with grief. Like how you would go to sleep holding a torn up blanket against your shoulders to keep out the cold, haven't you heard? They found him one night washed up in the current that brought the fish in with the tide. He had bled out from the inside, no one heard his last words, and they kept the ashes in a quiet urn, in a quiet cabinet, in a quiet building on the edge of the road where the cars pass without provocation. Haven't you heard of the girl who asked her shadow out on a first date? Stole the car from the garage and stole the keys in the front seat, band-aided the door shut on the way home, ordered four shots of whiskey even though she was underage, and when she brought out her fake ID that said she was 22, no one believed her. But they didn't tell you that because she was wearing makeup and high heels and they thought she was porcelain pretty, mannequin pretty, and she drove home and made love with her darkness in the car. They found her tangled up with an electrical post, a barbed wire embraced like a final twisted kiss, and her ribcage was sprawled open like arms held, like lips touched alcohol, silent on her breath like it was oxygen. They buried her underground and put up a road sign saying, speed limit, 30 miles an hour. And haven't you Ever wasted a pack of bandages trying to hide a scar, panic of the nosebleed that lasted longer than the few minutes you were expecting, ran to the infirmary calling, the nurse seeing the life drain out of you like water, like rain, then she took out a bottle of alcohol and stemmed the bleeding, eyes bleeding, so she held your hand and brought you back to class. But the gauze is gone now and the uniform has been stowed away like a love poem left unfinished in the back room by the side of the grade school corridor stored in the janitor's closet by the trash bag, non-biodegradable. The walls are dissolving, leaving the peripheries. The masks are being kept and stowed away in cabinets and the prescription pills, they're in drawers now. IV drips collapsing and refrigerator drugs relapsing into the falling apart of all these hospital beds, creaking at the nails and at the joints and at the rusty metal the color of the nosebleed that is the least of your worries, that is the most of your worries, the band-aid packets that the nurse kept hidden behind the Benedine, well, they were stolen by a 13-year-old grade school on his way back home. So I can't believe you when you say that your heart skipped a beat when you saw her because I stripped away the barbed wire bear once, used the stethoscope to break at the skin, told my veins fairy tales, and sang my arteries love songs, wrote my red blood cell songs to while away the days for the patching up of those scars for the stopwatch kept going, second time after second, none of those beats slowing, stowing, stowed away until the tears formed at the edges of the bone, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard of the high school student? who smuggled pain into school like it was heroin. 
stashed it in his locker and cuffed it up in the bathroom, saw his reflection in the toilet bowl, sat down until the cuts started forming on his wrists of their own accord. They've cleaned out the stalls now. And they tacked the tissue paper dispenser onto the side, leather shoes stepping cleanly away from the vomit epitaph washed and swept by the janitor's mop, his suicide note was a mannequin ballad, an ode to the shadow's greatest that he kept in the place of his skin, and the shadows wore thin, well he did too. Stethoscopes probing singularities like surgery, windpipes giving way to blood or vomit or the smell of whiskey after the burning of gasoline and the barbed wire symphonies of cut band-aid screams, and there is not enough gauze in the whole damn world to stem, to stem the bleeding. I don't believe you, and I know that you're going to stay in love, and I know that things, things will go well for you, and sometimes fairy tales they do come true, but no, I wrote a love letter to my shadow, patched together by the sewing needle and the umbilical cord, performed scrap metal poetry, breathed in glass, that I would breathe oxygen, and when I asked the doctor what was wrong, he told me that I fucked up. Place the stopwatch too close to the muscle until the metal had cut into skin, hemorrhaged me thin. I asked him to stop the bleeding, scalpel bleeding, and you know what he said? There is not enough gauze in the whole damn world to save you. None to save you.